Hi, this is Robert Estrin at livingpianos.com. Today's question is, what's the difference between American and European pianos? This is a really interesting question and there's a lot to this. It's interesting how different cultures prefer different types of sounds. Have you ever noticed, for example, that Asian pianos tend to have a brighter sound than American pianos? You may have noticed that. And you might think, oh, is it because of methodology? Is it be well, yes, but more of it has to do with personal preference. There are cultural preferences in sound. Let's get back to European now. You know, um, I'm also a French hornist. My wife is a flutist. So I've been, I've played in many orchestras and been obsessed with listening to orchestras since I was a kid. And if you listen to recordings of some of the great European orchestras, like the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam or Berlin Philharmonic, you'll notice a very different quality, the tonality of instruments in European orchestras compared to American orchestras, like the Philadelphia Orchestra or the New York Philharmonic. And each individual instrument is different. In French horn, for example, the American sound is a big, fat sound. And in fact, most American French hornists play on the F side of the double horn, which is three feet longer than the B flat side. Now, of course, for higher notes, they'll put the trigger in to make it a little easier to play. But for the richer, fatter sound, they like to play on the bigger F horn. Whereas in Europe, it's much more popular to play pretty much on the B flat horn most of the time for most of the notes, giving kind of a, a more open, clearer sound, but without the fatness. But it's not just French horns. It's all the instruments of the orchestra have that kind of clearer, projecting sound more than the fat blending sound. The same exact phenomenon is true with pianos. Listen to a Fazioli or a Busendorfer or a Beckstein and compare that to a Steinway or a Mason and Hamlin or some of the great pianos from years past like Baldwin. And you'll hear a real difference in the quality of the sound. And as I explain to people time and time again, it's not a right or wrong. Some people, their favorite color might be blue. Some people, it might be purple. You can't say one is right or wrong. It's personal preference. Now, what I find to be true, though, is that for certain styles of music, one could be more appropriate. For example, when I sit down at a great European piano that's beautifully regulated and voiced and in tune and sit down and play a piece from the Baroque era, a fugue, or playing chamber music with a small group of strings, a European piano can just have a gorgeous sound, the delicacy, the clarity, the focus is absolutely beautifully suited to that sort of music. On the other hand, sometimes when you want that massive sound, you really want the American sound for that big fatness that you know European pianos can lack at times. Now, I'm going to stop right here and say that I'm giving a gross generalization and for everything I've said there are absolutely exceptions. For example, I've sat down with some Blutners that didn't have that quality of sound that I'm describing in European pianos. They can have a dark fatness that you don't hear typically in European pianos. Baldwin I mentioned, now Baldwin still has the American sound but it's closer to my ears to the European sound. Not quite as fat and voluptuous as a Mason and Hamlin for example. So there's a lot of, you know, perhaps overlap in this, and it is a gross generalization. The other thing I would find that the typical European piano can be almost like a fine sports car where you have to be careful not to hit the throttle too heavily and lose control. Because if you, if you really put a tremendous amount of energy into a fine European piano, sometimes it's more than necessary. You can get all the sound you need without having to exert so much energy. The way you can on a, on a great Steinway, it's almost endless. You can just keep putting more and more and more into it and getting more and more sound and different colors. Well, is that a good thing? Well, maybe, but maybe for some people, they don't want to have to work that hard because you can get all that sound out of a, out of a great Beckstein, let's say, <laughs> without having to put so much energy into it. So again, this isn't a right or wrong. And ultimately, it comes down to two things, personal taste naturally, but also 
perhaps equally important is the specific piano. You can't say that all European pianos are one way or even that all Steinways are one way or all Becksteins are one way because after all each instrument is handcrafted and they're made with woods and no two trees are alike. So you have to listen to each piano for what it is. But these are just general guidelines that you can kind of put in the back of your head when you're trying pianos and see how well the specific piano you sit at meets these criteria. I hope this has been interesting for you. Again, Robert Esther here in your online piano store, Living Pianos.